I'm Terry and I'm with the Miramar College EMT program. I'm here to elaborate on the CPR skill. CPR is the second link in the five links in the chain of survival for CPR patients. The first one is early recognition and early access. The second link is high quality CPR. The third link is rapid defibrillation. The fourth link is ALS, Advanced Life Support Intervention. And the fifth link is post-cardiac arrest care. Five links in the American Heart Association chain of command. First thing I'm going to do when I come upon a patient is make sure I have my standard precautions and my scene safety, gloves, eye protection, and a mask. Then I'm going to ask, did anybody see what happened? Ideally, someone witnessed was this person conscious, went unconscious, what were the conditions that happened before he went down. If no one knows what's going on, I'm going to assess his responsiveness. Is he alert? To do that, I'm going to use AVPU. Alert, meaning is he conscious of his surroundings and knows what's going on. If he's not, I'll um, try and get his attention with a verbal stimulus. Sir, sir, open your eyes. Sir, open your eyes. If there's no response to verbal, I will go on to P for pain. Grabbing his trapezius muscle right here, give him a big, strong pinch. Don't be afraid to hurt your patient. That's the idea. You're looking to elicit a response from them because of pain. Trap pinch. If there is no response, your patient is what we call unresponsive. At that point, I'm going to designate to someone that is watching. There will always be someone watching. Sir, please call ALS and bring me an AED. Ideally, you'll get a verbal response from them acknowledging they are the person designated for that. They go and get the AED. Next, I'm going to check for uh, pulse and breathing for at least five seconds, not more than 10. Using these two fingers on the side of the Adam's apple, you're going to assess for a pulse. At the same time, I'm going to get down and look for chest rise and fall, and I'm going to listen for any respiratory sounds, wheezing, gurgling, see if there's any breath coming out at all. I will be checking this for at least five seconds, no more than 10, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. So I've checked my patient for at least five seconds, not more than 10, for a pulse and for breathing. My patient has no pulse and he's not breathing. Immediately, I start with compressions. Using the heel of my hand, I place it in the middle of the chest, the lower half of the breastbone. Squaring my body up and using my whole body, not just my arms, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, and 4, and 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Moving on to my breathing, head tilt, chin lift, C clamp, It is just as important when you do compressions to allow full recoil. Let the whole chest come back up, allows the heart to refill with blood. As soon as your bystander returns, delegate to him to continue compressions on your patient. As soon as the AED is available, open it and turn it on. Pull the red handle inside are two pads. Just like in the picture, the yellow pad goes on the patient's upper right chest. The red pad goes on the patient's left axillary, left portion of their chest. You want to apply these pads to direct skin. So take the shirt off if you have to. It's important to make sure that you peel off the backing and apply the pads directly to skin. As soon as your partner arrives and brings you the AED, you'll delegate to him to continue compressions. For purposes of this simulation, we're going to run through exactly how the AED operates. Open it and turn it on. Listen. Call for help now. Pull red handle to open bag. Press pad firmly. Press pad firmly.
firmly. Do not touch patient. Evaluating heart rhythm. Stand by. Preparing to shock. Everyone clear. Press flashing button. Shock delivered. Provide chest compressions and rescue breaths. 